this morning I didn't want to preach. I just want to share with you the things that God has placed on my heart this past week. And I pray that you will discover your signature anointing. But first of all, I want to ask you, why do you think you were created? Why did God form you? What is the reason? I believe with all my heart and according to scripture that God had a plan and a destiny for your life and for my life before he formed the earth. Before the foundations of the earth were laid, God knew you. He called you. He's got a special, unique assignment for only you. In the prophetic world, and we are the prophetic people of God on planet earth, we talk about your scrolls. What's written on your scrolls? So when somebody prophesies about your life, and they prophesy from heaven, they are reading the scrolls. They are reading what God is saying about your life. Do you know what God is saying? Do you know why you're on planet earth at this very moment? The greater the accuracy you will have in knowing who you are, your identity in Christ, your signature anointing, the greater the impact you will have for now and for eternity. So let's start with created for a purpose. Ephesians 1, 3 to 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Yeah, did you hear that? He blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. He chose us in eternity, before time. And He had a plan, a good, good plan for each and every one of us. That's why Psalm 139 says, God was busy forming us in our mother's womb. When nobody saw it, when there was still nothing, He was busy. The Bible says, He knew your days. He had a plan and a destiny. And I believe fulfillment in life comes when you reach that. That I know that I know I'm doing what God created me to do. I'm, I'm functioning in the way He wanted me to function. Let's read Psalm 139, verse 13. He said, For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And that my soul knows very well. And he says, God, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret. And skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book they were all written. The days, the days fashioned for me. When as, they, as yet there were none of them. Do you hear it? It's like God has written a book about your life. It's written on the scrolls of your life. And it's not now, it's in eternity that it's done. But when you were formed, he was looking, he was forming, and he was writing because he loves you so much. There's nobody on planet earth like you. There was nobody before you. There will never be somebody like you after you, you are plan A in God's planning. Amen. That's exactly what God said to the prophet Jeremiah. He said, you are chosen for a specific job. I wish you could turn to somebody and say, you are chosen for a specific job. You see, God planned what Jeremiah had to do. God planned the impact he had on his society, and even unto us today. Jeremiah 1.4, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. 
Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. See, Lord, I'm to you. See, I've put my words in your mouth. Don't you worry. Just live it. I will do the rest. Just say, yes, Lord. Yes, here I am. God will do the rest. So what is this thing that I've written, this signature anointing? Let's look at the two words. What's a signature? If you see a signature, what is it? It says, Francois, it's you. It's your sign. It's identifying who you are. It's on the documents. It stands in court. Your signature. What is the anointing? The anointing is something in the Old Testament that poured oil over a priest or a whatever, a king, and anointed him. And the anointing was God's power resting upon that person. And until today, when, when I say I'm anointed and appointed, I mean the power, the supernatural power of the living God is upon my life. So the signature anointing is, it's only you, nobody else, nobody else. And it's only God in your life that empowered you to be who you are. Can, can, you, just, can you just praise God for that? So, your signature anointing is your spiritual blueprint, your spiritual fingerprint, your spiritual DNA that God created you. It's, it's, like, it's like a mantle. You know, some, sometimes the prophetic people will, will say, I see a mantle upon your life. It's like that mantle that only you carry, nobody else. And in that mantle, there's anointing, there's the power of the living God. Do you, do you realize that about your own life? And did you know that, that because you carry the special anointing of God, God created you to be solving problems that the people are, are having, the, the people God is sending you to? Do you know that? Today after church, tomorrow, holiday, Tuesday at work, when God sends you out to wherever you go, He wants to use you. You are the problem solver. You are the ambassador of the living God. Whoa. What a privilege. What a privilege to live in a time like this. I don't know whether you also received this little clip a long time ago about Benny. Benny, that Indian guy. Benny, from birth, had asthma and other stuff. And the doctors tried their best to cure Benny. But ben, Benny was an Indian guy with asthma for the whole of his life. And when he turned 16, the doctor said, they gave you the wrong medicine the whole of your life. The cortisone and the everything, you are going to die within a few months. It was a death sentence for a 16-year-old. And in that, and he, he grew up in another faith, you know. And in that time, he miraculously met Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He was radically transformed when he met Jesus. And the beauty is, within a very short time, he was miraculously healed. Totally, totally healed. He was dying. His lungs were non-existent. God touched, God healed, and gave him a second chance. That's the God we serve. And then God told him, his signature anointing. Then God said, my son, I am going to send you all over the world. He said, me? Because just before that, he had a javelin accident. He was paralyzed. In, from his back downwards, he could use his arms, and, and he's a beautiful musician. But he was paralyzed. He said, me, Lord, paralyzed, Indian guy. God said, yes. And when he, he tells you the story, he picks up passports this thick. He was the guy on planet Earth that traveled every nation on the globe in the shortest possible time. It was a world record. And as he went into these dark countries, he didn't keep it back. When they said to him, you cannot testify about Jesus, he wrote on his hat, 
I'm an Indian saved by Jesus. Then he said, no, no, you can't. He said, I'm an Indian. It's a national statement. He said, okay, okay, okay. And he won prizes for the songs he sang, even in Northern Korea. So, you see, he discovered, this is my signature anointing. I can play the guitar, I can sing a song, I can be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And God did the rest. What about you? What did he call you to do? What is the next part of your life? You see, um, the anointing just makes the difference. Can I ask you, did you ever encounter somebody and, and when you met with him, you, you just experienced, whoa, there's just something about this person carrying the anointing of the living. Did you, did you meet people like, like that? Um, this past week, I was on a, a Zoom and there was this elderly lady. She was in her 70s. But she had this amazing testimony. You know, when she speaks, it's radiant. I can't believe she's in her 70s. And, and then she told us the story. She said, you know, uh, she's an editor. But she's also a coach. So she was advertising a coaching opportunities, and, and this lady came to her, and she was one of the three quotations that she had, and she didn't want to take this quotation, but when she met this lady, she encountered the presence of God. The anointing resting upon this lady, this old lady, was so wonderful that this lady that came for an editing quote said, I'll take your coat. And then she said, but I, I need more. I need to be with you. What can I do? She said, you can join my coaching. And she said, I'll pay anything just to be in your presence. So I'm asking you, are you carrying the anointing of the living God in such a way that when you get to people, when you touch people, you, when you look unto people, when you speak with them, they just, they just experience God, God's anointing. This is really my prayer for you in this day that you will discover who you are in Christ. And then we never have to do it in our own power, people. Never. It's not about us. Zechariah 4, 6. Not by my might nor by power, but by your spirit, Lord. Benny could only go by the spirit of God. 1 John 2, 27, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing, the power of God teaches you concerning all things. And it's true, it's not a lie. And just that as he taught you, you will abide in him. And that's the secret, people. The secret is that we abide in him, and the more we abide in him, the more he abides in us. I, I actually wanted to share with you from Isaiah 60. That was the part of scripture that God was speaking to me about this week. So I'm going to read you the first three verses. Just here, he says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen about you. I just want us to stand still. You, you hear the, the verb? It says, you must... Rise, you must stand up and you must shine. How, Lord? Just be. The light of God is already in you, over you, shining. So, arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness of people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Can you receive that? The glory of God is going to be seen upon your life. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your anointing. So, Lord, today we, we rise, we shine. We ask you that, that your anointing and your glorious light will be in us and shining through us. We are here. We are ready, Lord. And the glory of God is a tangible thing, people. It's not something we talk about. 
The more you're in his presence, the more the glory will be upon your life. You remember that verse in 2 Corinthians 3.18? But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Do you hear it? As we are looking towards God in your prayer time, in your prayer closet, when you open your Bible, when, you, when you're just on the street and just speaking with God, as you behold His glory, behold His glory, His glory is shining back upon your life, and you can't contain it. And perhaps you won't see it, but other people will see it. They will experience it. That's what you were created for, to carry that glory to those that really, really need it. People, we are not here for ourselves. This is just not a service for your car to go out and now you can drive again. No, no, no. It's encounter time. It's a time that God can touch us and fill us anew so that we can go out and be his ambassadors. Amen? Amen. I sat in a business meeting this week, and this amazing thing happened. You know, the chairperson of this meeting, she, was a la- she is a lady. Uh, she was in the corporate business arena. She was, she's got an MBA and a doctorate and a whatever. She's, she's a high flyer. She's world-renowned. Now, she's chairing this meeting. And one of the ladies in this meeting When she asked her question, this lady just shared her struggles. Yeah, and it touched me when she shared, because you could could feel it. And then this miraculous thing happened. This is a business meeting. And this chairperson just asked her, okay, thank you for sharing. May I pray for you? Business meeting, eh? She said, yes. And she started praying. And she started prophesying over this lady's life. And the presence of God was so tangible. And I thought, Lord, so this week, God woke me up one morning, 2.22. Now, those of you walking the prophetic will know two is a prophetic number. The word stands with the testimony of two, two. Two, two. So God was speaking. I was wide awake. And God said to me, you are not where you ought to be. I said, what do you mean, Lord? And the, the dream that he gave me, it means that although you're praying, although you're reading the Bible, you're not walking in the presence of God as I want you to experience it. And I immediately repented. Because he also showed me the devastating effects if I don't go back to just loving my king with every fiber of my being. And I said, I repent, Lord. I repent. I just want to walk in my signature anointing, the supernatural potential that you've given me. Do you hear it? When you carry his presence... When you walk in his presence, when you carry his anointing, when his light is shining upon your life in such a way that you will shine with Jesus, you will have an impact in your family, in your friends, in the world you are called to be. Jan, thank you for sending one of the prophetic words of Nate Johnson. Can I share that with you? Is it okay? Nate Johnson experienced the following He said, I woke up after an intense dream of an underground forge. And it looked to him as it was weaponry or something that was formed in this underground forge. So he went downstairs, deeper, deeper into the core of the earth. And then he encountered these people. And then he realized it's not weaponry. It was the people of God, the army of God that was formed in this underground forge in a time like this. And when, I, when he encountered the people, he saw, but this, their eyes were shining like fire because they were so long downstairs and not out in the open that it was like the fire of God was coming from their eyes. 
and they were in unity. They stamped their feet in unity and they sung, sang a song in unity and they were celebrating because it's time to be released. The army of God is going to be released people very, very soon and we are part of that. So he asked them, so what is your purpose? And they said, we are the army of Joel too. And we are part of what God is going to do. He's going to shake the earth once more. So he asked them, so what will be shaken? And they answered with this scripture of Haggai 2, 6 to 9. This is what the Lord Almighty says. A little while. And once more I will shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations. And what is desired by all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this presence house will be far greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. In this place I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. Can you feel the rumbling? The great end time army is being commissioned to shake. And we, we are part of that. We will shake the earth with the presence of God. So the great movement that has, that has been forged underground is prepare ye the way of the Lord. God is coming. Jesus is coming back. And we must be ready. And the bride must be ready. And we must Go out and tell the people about what's happening. Now, it's also true that the signature anointing brings provision and it's good news, but I'm very hesitant to preach about things like this because there's a prosperity theology that's not from the, the, the word and the Lord. Uh, we must get to the context. And this context was Jerusalem and it was the Jews and it was Israel and it was the temple. The people, the principle stays the same. It's to enhance God's kingdom. It's a biblical principle. Where the glory of God is, the provision of God will be. Did you hear that? Where the glory of God is, and He is the King of kings, and His glory shines, He will provide. The silver is mine, the gold is mine. The wealth of the nations will come to you. But it's not for us. It's for the kingdom. We will just live from that. Never in lack. Isaiah 60. Lift up your eyes around and see. They all gather. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant and your heart shall swell with joy. Because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitude of camels shall cover your land. The dromedaries, the media, and the epa. Those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. And the flocks of Kedah shall be gathered together with you. The rams of Neboth shall minister to you. They shall ascend with acceptance on my altar. And I will glorify the house of my glory. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these who fly like a cloud and like the doves to the roost? Surely the coastlands shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarsus will come first to bring your sons from afar, their silver and their gold with him, to the name of the Lord your God and to the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. So I met this business lady, also a high flyer, and she came out of the corporate and God said, U-turn, make a U-turn. And she's still in the business world, but now she's just proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ without any shame. She's boldly proclaiming the gospel in business meetings wherever she goes. And the beauty is God turned her income around to much higher than she ever had. Do you hear? So many times we want to please the world. People, we want to please God. We're not people pleasers, we are God pleasers. So I, want to, I, I really want to encourage you. God will provide in your every need. But, 
But we mustn't, if we read Isaiah 60, we cannot read it without Isaiah 61 because it's one context. And your signature anointing will impact the world. Please tell that, just wake up, just tell the person, your signature anointing will impact the world. How many times did you read Isaiah 61? So many times. But we must read it in the context that God says, my light is shining over you. Stand up, arise. My glory is upon you. I send you out to impact. Just listen. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's the piece of scripture that Jesus also quoted. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to those who are bound. People, if we are not impacting the world, if we're not touching those in need, the, 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 the brokenhearted, if we don't do that, something is wrong. For me, the most awesome part is when the anointing of God is upon my life, it's no problem. I will preach the gospel. And I opened my WhatsApp this morning and a guy from Congo said, please, come. I said, I'll come. You tell me when. When God gives me any opportunity to go anywhere and just to preach the gospel, I'll go. It's not by my power, it's by my spirit. And, and we mustn't, Make this either too spiritual or only the physical chains that will be broken. It's both physical and spiritual. We are anointed, we are appointed to touch the poor, to touch the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, the prisoners. You are called to touch the people around you and wherever God is sending you. I had to recalibrate my life in this last few weeks. Say, Lord, am I still where you want me to be? I want to live in my spiritual fingerprint that God created, my, my signature anointing. That's all I want to do. And three times this past month, God spoke to me about precisely this. I know it's his message for us as his people. Live where you're creating to be. We, we talked about the being in the boxes and getting out and standing at the canvas to see what Jesus is painting, I'm asking you, are you smack bang in the middle of the center of God's perfect will for your life? Do you know what Jesus is painting? Do you know what's on the scrolls of your life? Do you know the anointing of God that's already resting upon your life? If not, be open today that God can touch you transform you and use you like you've never seen me. It's not difficult people. It's the only thing. It's the greatest joy whatever you do. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, we praise you for your presence. We praise you for your word. Jesus Thank you that you opened the doors to eternity for us. Holy Spirit, thank you that you came to touch our ears in the Spirit and our eyes in the Spirit to hear and to see. Lord, you know our hearts as we are sitting here today. There's one thing in our hearts. Can I ask you just to stand, please? Won't you just stand? You know there's one thing in our hearts, Lord. We want to know who we are in Jesus Christ. We want to know our signature anointing, our spiritual blueprint, our DNA. And we want to ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will now come and empower us. Empower us through your spirit. Touch us and transform us, Lord, that we will be who you created us to be. Use us, Lord, to impact as you created us to be. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.